today we're going to be talking about something called the ambiguous case of law of signs thanks to regents prep for making such a wonderful document so i did not have to create something on my own i'm going to kind of walk you through what this ambiguous case of law of signs is i'll also have the link to this site posted in the description so that you can check it out yourself and kind of get an understanding for it as well so what happens essentially is for law of signs law of signs works really nicely when you have these two scenarios angle side angle or angle angle side so it works just fine you get one solution wonderful however when you have side side angle the donkey theorem as it's affectionately called it typically when we first learned how to do these types of theorems we said side side angle doesn't work but for law of signs it can work and it's a little confusing so if you have law of signs in SSA you have three options and we're going to talk about what each of those scenarios and options looks like so here are some facts to remember I'm not really going to go over them but you can look over them and keep them in the background as you're going through this so let's like take a look at this first example so we're given side side angle for this problem and we label it and so in order to figure out if it works we have kind of three options so it either is not going to work so law of signs isn't going to work for this side side angle you're going to find one triangle that's possible or you're going to find two triangles that's possible so to figure out if I get one triangle, no triangle, or two triangles, here's what you do. You look for the angle that you're missing. So here I'm missing angle C. That's the one I don't have. I know I'm looking for angle C because C is labeled across from it. And I just use my regular law of signs. A over sine A equals C over sine C. When I go through and simplify this down, I find that C is equal to 24 degrees. Now, 24 degrees is what sine is in quadrant one, but we know that from our unit circle, sine is positive in quadrant one and two, so we have to account for it in both quadrants. So if I look in quadrant two, the reference angle for 24 degrees in quadrant two is 156 degrees. So 24 works because 24 and 30 is less than 180 so I can create a triangle that has an angle of 24 and an angle of 30 however if I create a triangle that has an angle of 156 degrees 156 if so if I say angle C is 156 and then I add it to the one that's already given 30 that is bigger than 180 and that is not possible so for this problem there's only one triangle possible and the angle for angle C that we found is 24 degrees, and then 24 plus 30 subtracted from 180 gives us angle B of 126. So that shows us that there's one triangle possible. In example number two, what we're gonna do is the same exact thing. We take what we're given, we use law of signs to solve it, in this case, when we go to solve it, when we go to find angle C, so we take the inverse of 1.1428, it tells us on our calculator that's not possible because this value cannot be bigger than 1. So if you try and do it, so you're solving using law of signs and you use your inverse sign to find that angle and it doesn't work, then you know that just doesn't work. That's not possible for it to work at all. And then the last one, example three. So we're gonna take it and we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to set up our law of sines. We're gonna solve for our angle. In this case, our angle is 53 degrees. So if I put a 53 right here for angle, excuse me, for angle B down here, if I put a 53 for angle B, then I know I could have 30, 53, and 97 for my three angles and that would sum to 180. Now if I go move into quadrant two, so again if you have this angle 53 degrees that's just the angle in quadrant one. So I have to find its reference angle in quadrant two because sine is also positive 
in quadrant two on your unit circle. So the reference angle for 53 degrees in quadrant two is 127. So 127 plus 30 is less than 180, and that means the last angle, angle C, would be 23, which still sums to 180. So that means for this example, you have two different triangles. I know this is incredibly strange, but let's kind of summarize what we do. So to figure out how many triangles are possible, and to figure out your solutions, you simply solve using law of sines. If it doesn't work, so if it gives you an error or says it doesn't work, then there's no triangle. If it gives you one angle that works, you have to find that reference angle in quadrant two. And to find the reference angle, you just take 180 minus this angle. In this case, this reference angle is 156. 156 plus the given angle of 30 is bigger than 180, so this has one triangle. In my third example, I got 53 as my angle, and 53 minus 180 is 127. 127 plus my given angle of 30 is still less than 180, so that also works. So take some time, click on this link, look through this, and try and make some sense of what it's asking when you're using the ambiguous case of law of signs. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. If you wanna get better at math, Subscribe to my videos here. If you want more information on math, click on my website link here.